Firstly, thank you everybody for your time and energy being here today. It's um, an incredible opportunity for us to be able to come together again as part of some of our partnership activities. And um, as I mentioned, when we launched this a few weeks ago, um, a lot of the work that you have put in over the past 18 months, um, trialing out and prototyping how we work together in this blended model has contributed to how we're going to continue to work together. The coach training um, itself, um, as you know, there's about 26 of you involved in this process, two from each school. And the goal of this coach training is to grow the capacity across our networks of schools um, of facilitators who uh, will also be supporting not just their school, but perhaps supporting um, provincial and national in-service weeks and other opportunities across the country into the future. So it's a really great opportunity to start to refine some of your skills around um, facilitation, learning design, and of course, leading some of the professional learning that's currently um, uploaded to the learning bank, which Emily's gonna, uh, Emily's gonna speak a little bit more about shortly. But before we get started, I might hand over to Rosalind, if you could please open it with a prayer for us. Thank you, let's all pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come to you this afternoon through Jesus the Son. We acknowledge your presence to be with us. Lord, everything that we do is all drawn from you. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, bless us, the participants and the facilitators that will lead us through today. May you be in the midst of us. May your wisdom, knowledge and understanding be in us today. Whatever that we will acquired today, may it be of your will. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Rosalind. So I would just like to acknowledge the Kabi Kabi people of the Sunshine Coast, which is um, on the land on which I am today, and would like to extend um, acknowledgement across Papua New Guinea and all of the places and the traditional owners of the land in which you are on today. And certainly pay respects to all elders past, present, and the leaders emerging from both of our countries. So today, as you know, we are on Meet. Everyone's getting quite familiar in working this way, which is fantastic. Um, we do have quite strong reception across all of your campuses, which is fantastic. Like what a success story to think about where we were 12 months ago, where we were trying to connect for leading learning and what it looks like today, it's significantly more stable, which is fantastic. So uh, where possible, if your data and your bandwidth is strong enough, I would love for you to keep your camera on so we can see your face. Um, if it's not, it's okay to turn off your camera because we know that the camera does take more bandwidth. Um, make sure that your microphone is muted if you're not speaking. And if you do have headphones with you today, they will come in handy because we will go into a breakout session a little bit later on and you'll have the opportunity to connect with each other. Um, so yeah, if you don't have headphones, um, we'll navigate around that. However, if you've got them, they're definitely helpful. So our agenda today, um, I'm going to do a broad overview of what coach training looks like um, show you where and how to access course materials. Um, of course, um, a little bit more detail around using and communicating with our you know, greater community, which is all of us. Um, and we will be going into exploring some of the courses that are also on the learning bank before we share calendars and conclude our session at 4.30 today. As you know, there's 20, there's actually 26 of us. We've got two NDOE staff who will also be participating. Um, however, what an amazing team. And most of you know each other because we were really lucky to have um, our experience together in Australia and in PNG in 2019. And again in 2020 in March, just before everything changed. So I know that it's going to be um, a really great opportunity today to connect with each other on your, um, when we go into breakout sessions, and I'm sure that um, you're going to be excited to reconnect with each other. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time overviewing coach training, okay? The coach training course itself has been set up as a self-directed course, 
It's uh, being specifically designed to support um, all of you as a team of facilitators to support you in designing professional learning. And the goal would be to support you across the network of 12 schools to you know, be supporting um, in-service or professional learning in your schools um, that might come off the learning bank, but also it might be for, um, learning that you design yourself and it also might be learning that you design for your provincial education board or for national in-service week or other community projects that you might be working on. So what we will be focused on is effective facilitation techniques and we'll be focusing on how to support groups towards learning objectives. Um, we will be discussing how to use active learning processes and how to facilitate active learning processes specifically with adults. We know it's a little bit different when we're working with students. Um, we'll be pulling definitely um, adult learning through this lens. Um, we will be doing some work around the design of professional learning and what are those key pr principles driving it and also discuss how we do iterations of improvement. For uh, many of you who worked um, with me last year around leading learning, we talked a fair bit about professional inquiry. So we're going to be pulling our thinking back into that space a little bit again. How we're going to be working? As I mentioned, uh, the bulk of this learning is online as a self-directed course. So what that means is that you will have access to a common shared drive, which we'll go through a little bit more later. Um, and all the learning materials will be sitting there online with not just content, but there will also be um, instructional videos and access to different software that can help support you um, in your learning throughout the coach training. Um, we'll also be um, engaging in some activities around actual facilitation of some of your designs and, of course, um, accessing the learning bank for some of those activities as well. So keep in mind the way that I've designed this is to make sure that we are working in alignment with the National Quality Schools Standards Framework. Um, and we did a bit of a deep dive into that um, the past two years. Um, I wouldn't say deep dive, we did a surface dive into that document the past two years. Um, but the key indicators that we will be, um, are that, in, that are embedded in this course is around school leadership, um, positive school environments, effective school management and quality learning outcomes. So um, you do have a copy of that document. I can send it to you again after our session today, but keep in mind that the structure of the course has been aligned so that you are improving in alignment with the National Quality School Standards Framework. Okay, so the coach training overview itself, it's made up of five different modules. The very first module is around digital collaboration and blended learning. A lot of the um, tools that we will use come directly from the G Suite. So I know that a number of you do have some fluency around using G Suite. Um, we will be unpacking our Google Classroom, Slides, of course, Meet, um, Docs, we will look at sheets. And as part of that, we will also introduce Neuroboard, which is a new um, platform that we haven't used across our past teams yet. However, it works as a large digital whiteboard where we can all reach in and synchronously work together. So the goal of that digital collaboration um, module is to support you guys working synchronously with each other online but also the different tools that you might use to be delivering as a facilitator. The second module is focused on why the difference. And we talk about the different skills required at, um, as a coach, as a mentor, and as a facilitator. And we know, and as all of you would know, um, being an educator, you tend to have lots of different hats on at different times, okay? And there's different types of skills that overlap at different times. And there's some skills that you would use for a specific purpose. So what we're going to be doing is to spend module two unpacking the difference between those three key roles that we um, inherently do as educators. Module three 
is about understanding the skills that really are embedded deeply into facilitation and to be thinking about how we bring our strengths to the forefront of how we're facilitating to support the learning of a group. And this is specifically, again, around adults learning because um, we're all very good at uh, working with our students for the most part. Um, we'll do that deeper dive into aspects of facilitation of adults. Module four is a bigger one. What it will look like is the actually designing a sequence of professional learning for somebody perhaps in your school, perhaps in your province, perhaps for the National Department of Education, um, but you will design and enact an actual um, professional learning experience. And I know that many of you have opportunities to do this across your school a lot of the time. However, we will be going through the key, um, key design principles that will guide our process in really designing in service of the people who we would like to design for. So that um, module four will really be focused more on your process, those design principles, and then delivering, okay? So a little bit bigger than the other modules. And the final module is a flipped learning reflection, which we will come together again, and we will do that online as we are today, okay? So keep in mind, when we talk about a blended delivery model, we're talking about using a series of both face-to-face, -face, online and independent tools for the learning, okay? So when we refer to a blended learning environment, um, you'll see the icon there on the left-hand side of the screen. It means that parts of it will be online and some of it will be face-to-face. -face. Through all of the learning that we've structured, the best way to do it is with your other coach buddy from your school. Okay, because as we know, collaboration is really key if we want to challenge each other and to learn and to sense make together. So the face to face part is always with your coach buddy. If your coach buddy is unable to, you know, be available at the same time as you, it is okay to do it by yourself. It's just more difficult to have collaborative conversations and reflection. When we go into self facilitated learning, it means that you can access all of the tools online, all of the activities online, and complete them by yourself. Um, again, always better done with a partner. However, you can also be working on them remotely at a time that suits you. And you'll see on the right-hand side, we have checkpoints. So these are the certain times that we will structure um, for all of our coaches to come together Typically, we call them optional checkpoints. So there will be an hour meeting, probably once every two or three weeks. And at that hour meeting, anybody, any one of our coaches are able to show up, participate in a checkpoint, ask any questions they have about the course learning, or maybe just they need to connect with us or with each other. So those checkpoints are more of a networking opportunity, okay? So you'll see these three icons across the course and you'll also see them um, on the next slide that I'm going to refer to. So the way each module works is the first module. Of course, we're having a blended version today. You guys are sitting with each other. Um, there's a number of us delivering online today, and there will be learning associated with module one that you'll need to go away and do independently. You'll see module two. It doesn't have a blended model, but it does have a checkpoint which means we will get together and create that space for people to share back, um, for you to check in if you have any questions or need any clarification or other support. Again, those four modules down all have work that you would do independently. And the very uh, final one, the flipped learning reflection, it's just a blended online um, module that will come together like this, okay? So, the approach to learning here is that access, um, you guys as coaches will have access to everything online um, through a shared pass drive, okay, like G drive, and you'll also have access to all of the courses available on the learning bank. Um, you'll require your laptop, your smartphone or a tablet to download course materials, 
Um, I'm aware that there a number of the devices are still being sent to you, so hopefully they arrive in the next week or two. Um, all of your schools have been issued with a pass phone with data, so you can use that to hotspot if your internet is not working at your school. Um, however, I do know that internet's also been connected across your schools, which is really fantastic. Um, wherever possible, um, if you cannot um, work online because the bandwidth is not working, you can download all of the, um, you can access and download all of the course materials to your laptop so that they're saved there so you can work offline as well. So keep that in mind. The main commitment here is that, well, it's recommended that coaches work through these uh, course materials together. And if you can complete them by the end of September, that would be fantastic. However, there is no deadline for this. Um, we know that you're incredibly busy and it might take till the end of the year and that's okay. The best way to commit to learning is to sit with your coach buddy and decide on your schedules when and where is a good time for you to catch up and work together at the same time. Um, my recommendation is that you probably get together at least once every two weeks um, and put aside an hour or two to go through activities together so that you can be working and, and thinking and learning together. And of course, I've already mentioned collaboration. Um, it's certainly a much deeper experience to do with somebody else. So we would also encourage that. Okay. So when we talk about communication that um, is, you know, it's a two-way communication. It's actually more than two ways. But you will see at different times, um, because of the design accounts I'm using with Google, sometimes it will come from a deeper futures or an unstuck learning account because that's where I'm designing. Um, please make sure that you don't email or try and communicate with me on those accounts. I typically do not respond to them. Um, however, WhatsApp is brilliant. Um, my Australia Awards email is brilliant. Of course, um, AEF team um, using their emails are also really great. And of course, you know, Aaron, Meddy and Junior um, are on all of those accounts as well. So please make sure at any time, if you need some clarity or support or you're halfway through an activity and it doesn't make sense, WhatsApp's always the fastest um, and then email secondary to that. Um, you, most of you already are logged into our WhatsApp group, which is fantastic because um, we will start to move some of the content through there, but also it's the best place to ask any questions um, that we have. Keep in mind that everybody who's a coach is in this group and nobody who is outside of the coach group is registered for this. So where possible, we'd like to keep the dialogue fairly coach specific. If you have questions to each other, of course, feel welcome to ask here, but you can also direct message each other as well if you would like to. I know that collaborating across schools um, is really important at different times, so please feel welcome to do that as well. Oh, it's gonna take me directly to WhatsApp. I might move back. Okay. So now we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of some of the learning that we're going to pull through today. Um, we will be using Google Meet, of course, uh, Google Drive and Google Sites today. So when I talk about Google Drive, it's a cloud-based storage and it allows us to all save our files online and access them from anywhere if we have internet connection. The way that we're going to use it for coach training is that I've created a coach drive only, a shared drive, which means that we can all reach in and access course materials um, from anywhere at any time. However, it's quite protected. So it means that, um, it means that only the Gmail addresses that we have registered for that coach drive will have access to it. Um, for all of you, what that means is that if you are using your computer and you have other Gmail addresses open or other non-Gmail addresses open and you try to access our um, shared drive, 
um, from a different email address, sometimes it won't let you in because it will be confused which account's trying to access it and it will say that you're not allowed to. So just make sure that if you are accessing our shared drive, that it's only with the email address that you have provided to AAPNG because that's the one that will be registered with us. Okay. What I am going to do is in our chat box, I am going to put the link for our shared drive. Okay. So if you are not super familiar, you should have a little, um, a little chat icon on the bottom of your um, meet today. If you click on it, your chat box will open up. And I am going to copy and paste a link in there for you. Just give me one moment. Okay. So I've just put a link straight to Share Drive. So what it should do, if you click that link, is it will open um, just the external Share Drive, which will look like this Coach folder here on the left. It should say Coach 2021. And for my benefit, once you have it open, in the chat box, can you just write yes, so I know that you're in. So yours should look a little bit like this. I obviously have some past star files there, but you should just have a coach folder. And once you can see your coach folder in the chat, just say, yes, I'm in. Thanks, Pauline. Thanks, Peter. I can see you both in. Awesome. Uh, Ethel, you're in. Good job. Titus. Asso, thank you. Awesome, Jeffrey, you're in. That's okay, Helen. If there's another um, email address 
that you have. If you put it in the chat box, I'll see if Emmeline can connect the new email. Uh, sorry, Anna, I want to hear, I heard a Yao email address, but I'm no longer using it. It's like five years ago. Okay. Do you have one that you're using now? Because we can connect you straight away. I only use the Gmail address. Oh, that's the only Gmail address you have? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if that matters. Emmeline, does it have to be a Gmail address? I would say so. Hmm. To be able to download files and that would have to be. But you should be able to recover your or yeah. Um, yeah, recover your password. You might just have to wait until after the session because otherwise it potentially would log you out oh, right. the meet. So That's maybe okay. just afterwards, yeah, give it a try. That's okay. Yeah, and everything that I'm recording today, um, you can go back through the file later and you'll be able to link to everything fairly easily. Okay. So don't stress too much. Thank you. Okay. So that's most people. Um, Betty and um, Jacob completely understand the phone's not going to be super helpful for this today. But you'll, you will have full access to all these files after the workshop as well. So don't stress too much about it for today. And Chitranus, you are in as well. Fantastic. Okay. So what I'm going to do is to share two things with you. You'll see here up on the right hand side tab, I have my slide deck that I'm working through. And then I also have my shared drive open here. So I'm going to model what this looks like to go through. However, the slide deck itself does have all the instructions to do this. So you'll see on my slide deck, if I am in my coach folder, which is my shared drive, it has all the folders that I need. So if I open up my coach folder, you'll see that there's module one, two, three, four, five. Okay, at this stage, if I click on module one, you'll notice that I have an introduction to coach training folder, which is for today. Okay, you'll notice there's an agenda in there, there's an overview, um, there's a learning activity and the slide deck itself. However, what I'd like to show you, which is consistent through all of the modules, is that you will always see three folders, an activities folder, an overview folder, and a video folder, okay? So again, you can see that I've highlighted these on the slide deck. Um, You'll, yeah, here we are. You'll see that I've highlighted on the slide deck to guide you through this process if you're unable to do it today. But before we do that, I'm going to ask that if you have your shared coach folder open, is that you bookmark your coach folder, which means that you're going to pin it to your um, search bar so that you can access it really easily in the future. The easiest way to do that is where your address goes in, your web address. If you pull over to the right hand side, there's a little star. And if you click on the star, it will bookmark the tab and you can say add to bookmark. Okay, so I'll give you about 90 seconds to do that and then we'll keep going. Once you've bookmarked your tab, just tell me in the chat that you're ready by saying yes.
Thanks, Pauline. Thanks, Ethel. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Otto. Okay, I might keep moving, but keep in mind that all of these slides are available to you now, so you can go back through them afterwards. Of course, this video is going to be helpful in a little bit as well. So in your coach folder, in the shared file, this is how we are always going to be accessing our coach um, modules. You'll notice that there's three folders in each, as I just mentioned. There will always be an overview folder, an activities folder, and a video folder. In the overview folder, think about that being the first place you go, okay? In the overview folder, you will see that there is a coach training overview for the module. And in that coach training overview, sorry, it's linking backwards for me. Um, you should be able to go directly to what would be an overview for each module, okay? Looks a little bit like this. You'll see this one's for module two. And in each of the overviews, it, you'll see a table of contents. When you page down, you will also see that it's laid out consistently through all of the modules. So at the start, it will have a little bit of information about what the module's about. You'll have your learning goals and everybody's familiar with our knowledge set, mindset, skill set, tool set. Below that, you'll have the summary of activities. All of the modules are broken up into chunks. So you'll see in the summary of activities that I have four different activities going on. On the left-hand side where it says guide, there are two hyperlinks. One goes directly to the slide deck and the second one goes to the instructional video, okay? On the right hand side, you'll see that any resources or activities are also linked. Okay, so my recommendation is that you do one chunk at a time. For the most part, all of the chunks are fairly manageable. And we've, I've done this intentionally because I know that um, educators are very busy people. Some people can find half an hour or an hour to do something. Um, and that means you might be able to get through one or two chunks at a time. Um, nothing is uh, very large and onerous until you get to uh, module four, which is around designing professional learning. So you'll see if I come down to uh, coach versus mentor versus facilitator, I have my slide deck, my video and two activities. If I click on my slide deck, it's going to take me directly to slide deck for this activity. Zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. Every slide deck will also always indicate which module it's for and then it will unpack specific details for just the chunk. Okay so this chunk is focused on coach versus mentor versus facilitator. If you click on the little um, play icon it will link you to the video, exactly the same video that is linked to your overview. Okay, so there's two ways that you can access. There's actually three ways you can access your video, but it's the same video for the instructions that is linked here, and the activities here on the slide deck are the same activities that are linked here on your overview document. So keep in mind, the overview document is the master document to go to to have all of the links um, clearly, um, and your slide decks are a secondary point to access them. And of course, you can go directly to these all inside your um, drive as well. Okay, 
So if I click on the video, you'll notice it links directly there. Um, I can press play. As you know, that, and you don't need to hear more of my voice. Over on the right hand side, I can click to the activities and they will open up directly as well. What you'll notice with the activities is that you can open them as a Google document. You'll see that it says save your own copy up here in the right hand side. It means when you see that icon, it means that you are on a master document. Okay, so what you need to do to save your own copy is you need to open in Google Docs. Once the file is open in Google Docs, it means that you have master access to it. So you need to be really careful while you're in this one because it means you can delete the whole file um, because it's in a shared folder for all of our coaches. So what we want to do is to create our own file. We can go file. We're going to ask to make a copy. And here it's called a copy of activity. And below that, it tells me where I'm saving it. Okay, so I don't really want to save it in the shared drive with everybody else's master documents. So I'm going to change the destination of this file. I can go back and you'll find if you go right back past shared drive, I have my drive. This is my own personal drive attached to my account and I can create a folder. So I'm going to say new folder and call it coach training 2021. Okay, so now I've got a folder, I go select, and maybe I want to change the name of my document. So I'm going to call it as activity. And if I press okay, it's going to then open my new file, which is now saved in my own drive. And you can see that it's called Anna's activity and I know that that's my file, okay? The original file is still open on a separate tab to the left, but my file is now open. So I can edit this however I want and it's only going to save it in my own folder, which is what we wanna do, okay? So that's how the overview works. You've had a quick look at the slides, the video. Um, I will come back to our slide deck and you'll see that I've put those instructions on our slide deck as well. So if you go to the overview, the PDF of the overview, remember that's your master. All of the slide decks associated with um, the master are also in the overview folder. There's a little bit of information on what should be on your master document, your overview document. A little bit of information about what should be on your, on your PowerPoint or on your slide deck. And then in that second folder, activities, that's where all of the linked activities are sitting. So while you might always access it from your overview document, if you decide that you'd just like to grab one and print it out as a hard copy, you can go directly there and get the original file. And of course, all of the videos are also saved in that original um, file for the videos as well. So again, I'll keep reiterating, the, master, the overview document is your master go-to. Um, and then activities and videos, you can access them if you need to. However, I encourage you to follow hyperlinks um, where you can. So from here, do we have any questions? If you've got questions, I'm gonna pause for about 90 seconds. If you could put any questions you have in the chat box, that would be fantastic. So we're gonna go into Google Meet and I know that we've been using Google Meet for a year and a half now. However, I never assume that everybody knows everything. So I will review some of the basic steps and then we will be doing an activity going into breakout rooms, okay? So as you know, it's a video conferencing app 
And the best part about using it when we have big groups like this is using the breakout rooms because it means that we can put you together as coaches. And while we would love to come together how we used to in 2019 and 2020, um, we don't know when we're going to be able to do that again. So using breakout room um, as part of our coach work, but also as part of our greater pa partnership means that we can put smaller groups of people together to have discussion at different times. So everyone's familiar with their microphone. I can see you're doing a fantastic job of keeping it off today. Um, I can see your cameras. I can see all your beautiful faces. So we don't need to go over this part. Um, you might be familiar with captions. They sit right at the bottom of your screen and they've actually changed since I updated this. If you click here, yeah, I'm going to show you on my screen. If you click on the three little dots on the bottom of the little bar, oh, go away these three little dots, it gives you options, okay? So if I go up the options bar, I can see there's a square with CC in the middle of it. It says captions on or off. If I turn captions on, I might choose to put them on in English. It's probably gonna be the most helpful language for me. And then what you can see is that the Google app itself, the Meet app, tries to read what I'm saying. Sometimes this is helpful if it's difficult to hear somebody well. Um, it's also helpful if your bandwidth is a little bit unstable and breaking up, you can read it instead of, um, instead of listening so hard. Keep in mind, sometimes it's incorrect. I find that at different times, um, some of my other teams will be laughing at me because the captions have come out so wrong. So it's just an option. I'm going to press stop on captions. And I'm going to turn my captions off. Okay. So the other thing you can do, which we might use at different times is I might ask you, do you, if you need help, and if you need help, you might raise your hand. Again, it's in that same spot. Down the bottom of your toolbar, there's a little hand. If you click on it, um, it alerts me and says that somebody has raised their hand. Facilitators in a blended model might use this in a different way. They might say, um, if you need help, raise your hand. Maybe they'll say, if you agree, raise your hand. They might use the hand function for different things. So can we practice this? Um, I might even share my screen with you here so you can see each other. If you have access to your raise hand button, press it for me. Awesome. You're all raising your hands. Fantastic. So I can open the queue and I can see Betty's raised her hand, Debbie, Sophie, Helen, Pauline, Ethel, Shifness, Jeffrey, Rosalind, Peter. So you guys have all raised your hand. Okay. I can also lower your hand as the facilitator of the room. Okay. But we won't do that now. The next function, which I'm going to ask you not to do today, is where you present to everybody, okay? When I go and set up my room, I have an option to allow other people in the room to also present their screens. So the way that you do that, um, many of you will already know this, is down the bottom here, see this blue icon, which is a square with an arrow in it? That allows me to present and share my screen to the group, okay? Which means it takes over all of your screens, okay? So at the minute I'm presenting, I'm recording. If you were to do this with your teams, you can also do that if you're working in a synchronous space on Google Meet or in a breakout to share your screen with everybody. Um, and you'll see down the bottom here, it says stop presenting. If I wanted to stop, 
I would press that and then it would reset back to everybody's um, camera only. Okay. So keep in mind, sometimes we accidentally press that and it can take over the facilitator screen. So I'm going to ask you to be really careful with that one. Um, yep, so you know how to stop sharing. Changing background. Again, I might show you how to do this. If you click on the three buttons on the bottom of your screen, again, these are all of your options on the three buttons, you can change your background. There's a whole heap of preset backgrounds and you can also, actually you can't add your own video in on these ones, but there's a heap of different preset backgrounds that you can choose. So for example, if I would like to choose uh, the beach, you will see it start to load. And then the beach is in my background. Okay. The thing to remember with changing your background is that it uses more bandwidth up. So if you don't have a stable connection, um, avoid having a background on. No background is the best. Okay. So I'm going to turn off my background. Some of the advantages of having a background is if you're sitting in your laundry room having a webinar, you can have a different background on, but none of us do that, do we? Um, okay. So that's an easy one to change. If somebody calls you and says, oh my goodness, I forgot the coach training was on today. Can you please send me the link? You can go down to the bottom of your screen, copy the joining info and send it directly to them. Okay. And then joining a breakout, which some of us have done before. Anytime we set up the breakout rooms and then we activate them, it sends all participants a little join now link, which means that you, if you press that, it will take you automatically to the breakout room. And then it will give you an option to move between the breakout room and the main room itself. Okay, so I'm going to stop talking for a bit and I'm going to hand over to let you guys talk a little bit. Um, while um, you're thinking about this, I'm going to set up some breakout rooms. But in your room, you will be randomly put in a room. So you might be with people you know. Maybe there's people that you don't know. Your job is to introduce yourself and uh, share what you're most looking forward to throughout co coach training. So we have a smaller team than what's on the list today, but there are there will be four to five breakout rooms. If you're sitting next to somebody who has a different device from you and you are both logged into this meet today, you will need to use headphones. The reason for that is that it creates a lot of feedback if the volume is coming through your device speaker um, and the microphone picks up the device next to you. So if you're sitting next to somebody in the same room and you're connected to the same meet call, uh, either put headphones in or stand up and move as far apart in the room as possible. Okay. Uh, remember that if you are not speaking, um, keep your microphone on mute. And if you're on a phone, which is a couple of you, um, you unfortunately can't access a breakout easily. Okay, so you will stay in the main room with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the breakout rooms. Make sure that your face is in the camera. Make sure that uh, your microphone is on or off, depending on whether you're speaking or not, and make sure that your headphones are on. Okay. So introduce yourself. What are you most looking forward through, to through coach training? I'm going to send you now. Okay, everyone is back. I'm, uh, how did you go? Let's do this. If you enjoyed connecting with your colleagues, give me a hand up. Yay. Yay. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. Okay, great. I know you did because we love connecting with you too. I might hand over to Emmeline just to um, share through uh, 
Google Sites quickly, our password site. I'm going to stop sharing, Em, if you'd like to share your screen. Sure. Thanks, Anna. So um, we just thought we'd share a little bit about the website and the learning bank, just to make sure you know where to find all the wonderful courses and activities that are on offer. Um, and as you would have seen, hopefully this morning in Toxave or via WhatsApp, we do have a, a new class website. Um, it's essentially the same as what it was. It's just the, the address that's changed. Um, much easier to remember. Just pass.edu.au and it'll take you to this uh, beautiful looking website. And you would remember from the coach training launch, uh, we showed you where the 21, 2021 courses and activities are. So it's all the new courses that we're introducing this year. Um, and it's got professional learning courses, teaching and learning courses, as well as collaborative activities. Um, so you can go through. Um, so that's the coach training that we're doing now. There's the old Little Mary um, with the first session also happening tomorrow. And then with some of the courses, we've uh, already been able to share all the materials, as you may have seen. So for Essential Pedagogies Toolkit, for example, which is a course that Chris Hart has developed for us, um, you can click on that button there, access all the materials, and it'll take you to a new page. Um, and then you can see the um, workbook um, and then a YouTube playlist. And then if I go back to the main page, which takes me back to the top, let me scroll back down. Um, then you can go down to the next course, Learner-Centered Pedagogies and Project-Based Learning, which is the course that Tom Barrett um, has developed for us this year, um, based on what he delivered with Chris in March 2020 in Port Moresby. So again, you can access all the course materials. It'll take you to a new page. Um, and if you want to just learn a bit more about the course before you go and access the materials, there's an introduction video and there's an FAQ um, for um, questions you might have about the course. Um, so the same, it's the same structure. Um, we'll come back to the Google um, Certified Educator. Same structure for the teaching and learning courses. Um, the Digital Skills Builder is um, currently being finalised, but as soon as that's ready, I will announce it uh, via WhatsApp and TalkSave. Um, and similar to the others, you'll find a button to access the course materials. And then we've got the two, um, two courses for students uh, around storytelling, um, developed by the Australian Film, Television and Radio School. Um, so same again, the button, the video, the FAQ, um, and then the STEM and the Environment course developed by Port Moresby Nature Park with Suze Victoria. Um, and again, you've got the button to access the course materials, the introduction video, and the FAQ. <coughs> with the Solar Buddy workshops that um, you would have, some of you would have attended um, recently, we've also added their support materials here for you to access. So once you've got your solar lights, I believe they're on their way, um, you can download those materials and it talks you through how to run the program in your own school um, for the students to assemble the lights. And then the last one I thought I'd show you is the Climate Resilience Design Sprint, um, which as you may have seen, um, we're hoping to run fully online on the 5th of August um, and you can register your team. Um, so ideally four to, um, four to six students with a supervising, uh, sorry, six to eight students with a supervising teacher. Uh, and if you're not able to participate in a fully online uh, sprint, which is completely understandable, um, then we'll uh, make the materials available so you can run it in your own school in your own time. So that's for the new courses and activities and you can find them in the drop down as well for those that have materials already available. 
Um, but otherwise, we've also got, of course, the full learning bank that we introduced last year. And here you can find a whole lot more teaching and learning resources, professional learning resources, as well as some inspirational resources. Um, and as you would remember, we did the um, learning bank resource uh, sprint earlier this year. And so there's a whole lot of resources that were shared by Australian educators that you can find as well. So there's a lot there um, for you to really explore and, um, and engage with. Um, and yeah, we very much look forward to hearing how you go using all of these. Thanks, Anna. Great, thanks, Em. I might share my screen back over here. That's really fantastic. I think it's like a really nice reminder of all of the resources that are available for us on um, the website. And so um, it's just there, path.edu. Dot .au. Um, is that correct, Em? With an AU? Yep, that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, oh, look, it's tried to link me directly there. Uh, so, again, we do have those courses available for you. Um, our activity that I would like to do today, and I'm not sure if we're going to get to complete it, um, however, I will. Uh, outline it for us so that we can start thinking about this activity um, to do after our session today. The easiest way to get to it is to go to our coach folder, which we're familiar with. We're going to look at module one, digital collaboration and blended learning, and we're going to do the task in the um, folder called an introduction to coach training. And it's set up exactly the same as the rest of the folders. It's just a very small activity to get you familiar with how the folders are set up and how to access. So if you remember, we said that always the um, overview is your master document. You'll find that the overview links to the um, slide deck and it also links to the activity. However, all three of these documents are in our folder today. So when you get into your coach training folder, I might actually model this one. Um, so here, if I go into my coach training folder, I go to module one, I go to an introduction to coach training. You'll see here's the agenda for today, but our master document is our introduction to coach training folder, uh, file here. You'll notice that it has the same information as what I shared today, a little bit about the NQSSF, how what blended delivery looks like, to remind you what each of the modules might look like, how to access your learning, some of the online spaces and digital tools that we will be using, and of course, our past learning bank that Emmeline just shared with us. I do need to update that site. Um, has a little bit of common vocabulary. And then the very first task of your course is here. So um, after this session today, um, we're going to link this video file down here. But you do have the link to the introduction slides, which are the ones that I have been using today. Um, and you also have a link to the PATH site, to a learning um, activity, and also an activity form. So if I click on the activity itself, you'll see it opens up. And my what I would like to do is to use the PATH learning bank. And I would, the sorry, I should speak proper English. Um, on the PASS Learning Bank, there's a number of different courses for you and your schools to use to support professional and student learning. Um, you can obviously click directly on this link. They are listed here as well. But your task is to set aside some time with your coach colleague to view the courses that are available on the PASS site. While you're doing this, consider which courses do you think um, the team at your school might need or want most? And which courses do you think that your students might need or want most? And if there's any other professional learning opportunities 
you think that your team would like, other than the courses that are listed, um, we would love to know. The easiest way to share back with us is to click on the link here, and it's going to take you directly to a form. And you're all familiar with these. We use them through leading learning a fair bit. However, what I'd like for you to do is just to respond to those key questions that we asked. So which courses do you think the team at your school might need or want the most? Um, you can click whichever ones you think. I need to change that slightly. Um, so you can click as many or as few as you think, yeah, my school would really love this. Um, explain why. Um, which courses do you think would be best for your students? Again, click and explain why. And the very final question, what other professional learning opportunities do you think your school might need or want? So for you, some because we haven't been face to face for a year and a half, I know that there's so many um, opportunities that we're missing to sit down and chat with each other. When we used to have lunch and morning tea and just day to day working next to each other, it was so much easier to sit with you and have you tell us, oh, we love this thing, we hate this thing, we would love if you create this opportunity. And this is the type of information that we would like to um, be fed back. So particularly that final question, if you think, you know what, I'm really interested in learning about this other thing that's not on any of the courses, please um, give us information about that. And not just for you, obviously, um, you're our, you're our precious coaches, but there might be other people in your school that we haven't had um, you know, the opportunity to work directly with yet. If there's other people in your school saying, we want this type of professional learning, can you please feedback um, on this form as well? Okay, so keep in mind here that, oh, where are we? That um, in this activity, as part of the introduction to coach training, that's where you will find both the slides, this video, the past site, um, that learning activity, and the activity form is actually just that um, feedback loop that I just showed you. Okay, so I am going to um, stop talking there and go back. Here. Oh, apologies, it's clicking through. Okay, so I know that we've given you a lot of information in a really short space of time. However, from here, I'm just going to overview a few things. You know that it's online and self directed. Okay, so everything will be up by the end of this week. You will notice already if you go through there, module one and module two are there. However, I haven't fully uploaded three, four or five. So if you can be patient with me until the end of the week, um, I'll make sure everything's up there in full and I will communicate um, on our WhatsApp group once everything is loaded and ready to go. However, feel welcome to start on module one and module two. Um, those coach check-in days, will be Monday the 2nd, oh, Monday the 2nd, Monday the 16th, and Monday the 30th of August. So they're all about two weeks apart. And we call them an optional check-in because we know that sometimes um, people were unavailable. However, that time has been set aside 100% just for coaches. Um, and we will, of course, have that fifth module will be an online online guided learning, reflection and celebration. So that one will be an hour and a half on Monday, the 13th of September, similar to what we're doing here today. Um, keep in mind that even though there's only those few check-in points, you can access us at any time on WhatsApp and we would encourage you to do so. Um, we are available. If you're stuck and things are not making sense, just text us. I will create extra time to sit with you and make sure that you feel supported and clear about what we need to do, um, as well any of the AEF or the AAPNG team. So we are mindful that doing an, um, you know, a remote learning opportunity is a little bit more complex than how we do it face-to-face. 
Um, so any times that it sit outside the coach check-in, um, you're welcome to access us. I'll keep reiterating that. Um, Emmeline, are you able to talk about the microcred a little bit? Sure. So this term might be quite new for some of you, but um, I guess with the move to a lot of online learning and particularly completing courses online, a lot of institutions now issue what's called a micro-credential once you've completed a course. And it's basically similar to what you would get in a printed certificate of participation. It confirms that you've completed a course, um, but it's it's got, I guess, some um, data in the back end that make it um, certified and recognizable online. So it's usually something that you can then share um, through LinkedIn, for example, if you've got LinkedIn um, or Twitter, uh, and it's a way for you to get your skills, you know, recognized more broadly in the online space. And so for PASS, we're looking at having a number of courses um, available for micro-credentials. So once you've completed the course, um, you can then receive um, a badge, a micro-credential, uh, which you can then uh, share uh, publicly online or showcase at least publicly online. So the coach training uh, will, will do that. Um, so once you've completed all the modules um, and I guess in this instance, obviously the optional check-ins you don't have to necessarily attend, uh, but the final celebration you would need to attend to make sure that you've fully completed the course, um, then uh, you will be able to have a micro-credential issued to you. Um, and so you will be, uh, we'll obviously communicate with you in terms of how that works, but you'll be able to see it um, online on a specific platform, but then you can also get a PDF version of it so you can print it out and use it for um, future um, reference. And we'll do it for a number of other courses, such as the Essential Pedagogies Toolkit, uh, the Digital Skills Builder, and possibly the Climate Resilience Sprint as well. So once these are, um, conf all the arrangements for these are confirmed, we'll let you know. Um, most likely you'll need to sign up to uh, the micro-credential platform that we use. So that then once you've completed the course, we can issue you a badge and you can see it, access it and um, print the PDF certificate from it. So yeah, there'll be more on this probably by the time of that last session. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Em. Thanks, Anna. And uh, yeah, keep in mind that with the microcred, because we're aligning this course to the National Quality School Standards Framework, it should hold weight if you were to hand it in as part of a CV or an application that you've been um, you know, participating in this, that's been building your skills as a facilitator and as a coach. Um, I want to create a little bit of space for some questions. Actually, can I quickly add, um, part of the way that I've structured, particularly module one, is that it is a soft version of what you would expect in the Google Certified Educator Level 1. So for anybody who is interested in doing the Level 1 exam, we've been issued um, some exam codes to support you guys to sit the exam free of charge. Um, it normally is not too expensive. It's normally about 10 US dollars to sit the exam. However, our, our friends at Google have provided us with some as a gift to you. Um, so once you get past module one of coach training, um, it's not a terrible idea to consider doing your um, Google Certified Educator exam. Um, you might find that there's a little bit more learning you need to do. However, it's an easy entry point for you to also get that qualification as well, or that credential as well. So, I'm going to stop talking. You know that we have our WhatsApp group to chat and I'm going to stop sharing my screen. If anybody has any questions, now is a fantastic time because it is 4.33. So we did really well on timing, guys. We did really well. Yay. Um, 
feel welcome to unmute your microphone and have a chat if you'd like to or in the chat box. Hi, Anna. Hey, Ethel. How are you? I'm good, thank you. With the first day, 5th of August, the Climate Resilience Design Sprint and Project, um, does it have to be the past coaches to facilitate or we could get the um, educators who are on the 2020 team, any one of them to do that? Does it have to be the coaches or the teachers who are on the second floor? It doesn't have to be, but I might pass over to M or Sophie to respond to that with more detail. Anyone really can take part, Ethel. Um, same with the students. It doesn't necessarily have to be the students that have been involved in 2019 or 2020. Um, it does help if they've, they're already familiar with the design sprint process, but it doesn't have to be those students or the, those teachers um, or yourself as coaches if you know, your calendar's already quite busy on that day, for example, but colleagues are available. So it's, a, yeah, very open. And it's the same with the other courses for that matter. Um, feel free to share them um, with, you, with your colleagues. Anyone can undertake them because a, a lot of the materials are available online um, or all of the materials are available online. Anyone can really do it from your schools. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks for the question, Ethel. Anybody have any other questions? I might start to close our meeting mostly on time today. Um, if you have questions, because it might happen, you're going to walk away from this today, um, throw them in our WhatsApp chat. Um, all of us are in there. We're happy to help. Um, if you do want to catch up with one of us one on one, we're also available to support in that way. Um, otherwise, feel welcome to start exploring Module 1 and Module 2 and I will let you know when the rest of them are in the drive and live. We can turn that into a rhyme, in the drive and live. Um, it's fantastic to see everyone um, and we did an hour and a half and we had most people, like I'm going to say 85-90% of you have a stable connection. So we have to celebrate the successes when they happen. This is a massive win. It's only going to get better, right? Fantastic. Well, looking you all, girl. Good to see you all.